Well, hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today is Friday and on Friday we do different florals and today I thought we'd do a watercolor practice, super simple flowers, me showing you techniques I use with one brush and hot press paper. Yes, I love the hot press. And why I love it? Because it creates a different type of look than the cold press. The collar sits on top of the page, you know, it's more vibrant, you can play with it a little differently. It's just something to explore. I think everyone should try in different papers and see if they like them and see the uniqueness of them all. So I love cold press for landscapes and wet on wet and gradient washes, but I really like hot press for really cool kind of fun bot botanicals. Yes, really, really cool. So we're going to go over this step by step. No need for a trace or anything like that. Also check out my Patreon, I have ad free videos, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and a live stream on the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. Um, you can check it out in a second up here. Boop! Um, without further ado, let's get painting practice for some fall autumn florals. So for this watercolor flower practice, I'll just go over some supplies. And today I'm using, of course, hot press paper because I want to talk to you about painting on this paper. Um, I really like it. I I go on about how I love playing with hot press besides cold press because it's just, you know, just a different way and different technique of painting on it. The color sits on top of it. It gets a little more vibrant and it's smoother for strokes. It's kind of fun to play with. So it's a little different than the cold press. I like them both, but lately I've been into the hot press. So I want to show you what I'm doing with that. I'm going to just be using my Princeton 8 round. Um, I'm not going to keep switching bigger brushes, simple paper towel here, and I'll go with the paints as I use them. So I have Cabin Yellow Deep, I put some right here. I'm going to add a little burnt umber to that just to tone it down, make it more of like a, you know, autumn mustard yellow. I have a Lizarin Crimson that I'm using this time right here. I'm just going to loosely get that loose right here. And I mix it up here with some Prussian Blue to get a nice purple tone, right? And other colors we'll play with, um, paints gray, and we can play with the burnt umber and can add some paints gray to it to get like a nice deeper brown. And we can play with orange. I have some orange down here. Let's get this loosened up. It's really bright, so I might have to add, you know, another color to it, like a brown or blue. See, we can add some blue to that orange right there, and it just this cobalt. It just tones it down. It's so bright, this brilliant orange, but we don't want a bright orange. And maybe I'll make like a blush tone. Um, I'll grab some of this crimson. I'll even grab some of this orange. And then I'll grab a little bit of yellow. Mm, still kind of looks orange. I'm going to get some more pink in here. I'm playing around with this a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know. Mix it around. Okay, it's good enough. I'm putting more water in there. So the consistency is kind of like tea for the water that I'm using. And we'll start with like just the crimson. I'm gonna loosen this up. I'm gonna put some over here with the Prussian blue. So I want to do like kind of like a chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. I can't even speak right now. Chrysanthemum. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Um, kind of these strokes where you're using your arm and you're just kind of like lifting it like this. So let's play with that. I'm going to grab this crimson color. And by the way, you don't have to use the same colors as me. You can just play around. So just going to be going like this. See? Swoop, swoop, swoop. It's got a lot of action. Swooping. You're kind of going like this and around and then making little shorter ones on the bottom and kind of swooping back on these ones a little bit. And we go in, go back. Now we're going to just start with this and let this dry and we can go back in and add some more layers. And see how the color just kind of sits there and it will leave some hard edges in some areas. See what that's puddling. But I like that. I like the look of it. Um, another flower we could do, you know, 
a simple if you take your if you want to just take your pencil or whatever if you want to map it out just draw a circle here and the circle in the center so I did like a oval kind of like there I'll take my yellow just go around that so you see the ring the ring of fire I'll let that dry we're gonna be doing some simple leaves on the outside of that while that's drying let's play around with some more of that chrysanthemum kind of flower in a different tone so I've got that orange color I was talking about earlier I'll just play around still a little bright same kind of movement Now, I'm not sure if I like the orange, but I'm playing around with it. So we're obviously working in warm, like hot tones here. Purple's a little mixture of cool and hot. You know, you got that pink with the blue. So it's a nice, it's, 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 it's a nice color scheme. It doesn't really make you like ugh, cringe. So that's kind of drying. Also, I wanted to put a little green in the center. And we'll come back to that. See how it just sits there, that paint? So we're just gonna let that dry, but we're gonna do some little, take some of this crimson here, water it down a little bit. I'm just gonna do these little marks, pushing on the side, just with the bottom of this brush. See, kind of holding it. So this part here, like the very, the tip to like a little bit in, just kind of dabbing it. Almost looks like little beads. And then we'll wait till this dries and we'll come back and we'll work on that flower. Right? Even with this tip. So I can take that brown we talked about, use the tip of this. Let's start to build out some stems. Right? You could do some sweet little stems here for some berries. See, just it's got a nice tip. You can do a lot of this stuff with this nice tip. You can create some nice leaves with the paints gray. So we have the nice, just push down, pull back, kind of connect it. You can create some nice leaves with this. Really simple. Just building out, whoops, we missed that. <laughs> Pushing down, you see now how it's kind of like starting to get a hard edge here, just kind of push it around again. Show them who's boss. You get time. It's not really going to soak in yet. That's another beauty of the hot press. It takes a while to soak in. So you can kind of push that paint around a little more. But see how it sits on top? You get that more vibrancy color. So with this one, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take that kind of blushy orangey color and just make these lines like this. Push, push, kind of in a V. This is just floral practice for the fall. And it's a little on the brighter side. We're gonna build it and make it a little bit darker. But right now we're just kind of putting in some washes. And we'll go back to it. I'm going to balance over in this section here, down here, the same chrysanthemum. I'm just going to turn my paper, that purple, and do it again here, like we did before. The same movement. Whoosh, whoosh, and then backward and downward here. I can grab some of that alizarin crimson so it's a little more pinkier going in here and there we go flip back see that maybe we'll put in a yellow flower to brighten this up oops and especially right in here where the purple is because it's going to be it's going to make a jump because they're complementary colors so take your brush and that yellow that we mixed up, we're gonna have a little more brown in here. And simple like daisy can be really pretty. 
again you can kind of just twist your brush around twist your brush around twist and twist put it under there be careful not to get right on that purple so it gets muddy brown just a simple yellow flower there add another one over here to kind of balance the yellow see we're building building and building and building and in here what are we gonna do there maybe in like another orange type flower or some really deep dark red maybe they really make a crimson in there crimson flower so we've got the crimson color and we can kind of play around just making some strokes some deeper kind of like daisy strokes Make them a little shorter on this side. Right? And if you get even darker with this color, you can add some Prussian blue or some brown. I'm going to grab some burnt umber in here. See, and it's still wet. I'm going to tap that in there. It's still dark. So now it's this, some of these are dried. We do another pass. on top in between those whites you might get some more red in this orange just like this see the swooping movement and back again and up in here same thing now I might grab some more crimson it is starting to look orangey it's supposed to be kind of blush but in between that white area, I'm going to go back in here. Just kind of fill in the space. Leave it that pale color in between some of them. Grab some of the darker crimson too. And you can just tap, tap, tap. Okay. Leaving some of the light pieces and just using the tip of this brush kind of just doing some little swipes in the areas that were in between with where the white was. Just simple like that. Still damp, you can go back in and grab some of your crimson. Gonna mix it with some brown here. Get it really dark and go in between again. You see some white. Doing like another layer in here. And I'm going to go make some dark marks just kind of on this one side. Still want to keep it nice and loose though. And this side's a little bit lighter. On these daisies, you get a little bit of orange and yellow. Kind of go back in here. Same thing from the center outward. You can add another layer of petals if you want. You can take some of the yellow and just tap that in the center of this little flower in here and here. Right, and now we're going to be finishing up soon. We're getting closer. Grab that gray again, or even that brown. We didn't do berries, but I'm going to put some berries in this one. And right there was a stem for berries we didn't use. Just loosen up that crimson. If you want to add another color to it, go ahead. Just simple circles. Gonna add a little yellow. Berries. Just really simple. Some round berries. Going right on top of that. I wanted more in there. I could put a few over here too. And come back in with the stems in a minute. I think we're getting there. So we can add some greens. Now I've got that one pretty green I put in the center here. I'm gonna go back in with another pass make it a little bit darker. If you want to add some greens in here, just kind of push down and add some greenery. 
see I'm just kind of pushing it in here little tippy taps am I going to grab some Prussian blue and make my green darker add a little burnt umber to that even darker yeah and you could add some really deep dark leaves so you're just kind of pushing down and wiggling it and pulling at the end put a little stem if you want and put some of that green in between some of the blooms in here and in here and wiggle that just keep it simple so now we're going to do one more pass with this purple again thicker the paint right it's more of like a red purple I'm going to add more purple in there Ooh, more crimson figure it out but a darker tone see keep some of that light I'm just going to do the same thing leaving some space little short lines same thing with this one so you're leaving some of the dark and some of the light going back in here you can even grab some of the paints gray put some of that dark dark real deep dark color in there and here too so it really stands out It has a lot of energy, this flower. And, of course, let's not be sad about this guy. He needs a little bit more darkness. Another pass, again, just another layer of dark tones. In the yellow, we can take our paints gray, go in here, fill this in. Just making a simple center with the paint's gray. And at the tip of the brush, put in some veins of those leaves we did in the beginning. Right? And if you want to add some of those gray leaves over here, because they feel like they're missing out, please do so. And I might take some brown, add a little yellow to that. This is the burnt number. Let's make some little grasses kind of flowing out of here. Little tap, tap, taps. Almost like they're wheat. See, so just in a line and just little taps. A line and just little taps. Really much, not much effort with this. It's just sweet little stems. And then you have a fall. A cute little fall floral that didn't take much effort um, if you want to go in and make grab some color here make a deeper green center again it's gonna go fill this in a little bit next to the uh, yellow I'm gonna put in some here on the side again put in some beans you know have fun that's what it's all about. And that's the practice. That's it. I think it's pretty simple. You know, just one brush, moving your hand like this, this way, this way, tapping it this way. And you have a nice floral. And you see, I love the hard edges. You don't always have to have everything blend and bleed. Sometimes those hard edges are really pretty. Um, they add character to the flowers. I'm going in and adding some more crimson in here. Just kind of put some kind of pinky reds in this purple. And get this one a little bit darker. Add some little dashes in here. Play around. That's what it's all about. It's about having fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. One simple brush, play around with hot press because hot press, as you can see in this tutorial, how it sits atop that paper and it creates those 
balloons that some people don't like, but in this instance, it's really kind of flattering. It, this is kind of what the look I was going for. I'm going back in adding little line details with the tip of my brush. See, so you take some darker tone and kind of just wiggle, wiggle and pull it down, wiggle, pull it down, wiggle, pull it down, wiggle in between some of these so you can see the little edge of the petals. And this one I wouldn't wiggle, but you can put just a couple of lines around some of the petals and that's it. And that's all she wrote. If you want to add yellow somewhere else, go add yellow. Kind of little flecks of yellow. Maybe like a little, see I'm just doing some little tippy taps. And I'll add a little stem. Always play guys, always play. So there you have it. Watercolor practice on hot, hot press, doing a floral. Really simple, simple lines, techniques and also the colors. So we've got mostly hot tones and some cool. You see they complement each other, the red and the green, the yellow and the purple, they kind of stand out. And then these kind of just almost like analogous, they're kind of next to each other, they, they complement each other because they're in the same family and then the brown. That's how you do it. All right, take care and I'll speak to you soon.